us pray. Father God, again, we thank you for allowing us to see the first Sabbath of 2023. We ask now that you be with us, Father, as we prepare to go into worship service. We thank you for already being here in your presence. Now bless those that have come to worship face to face and those that are online. And Father, when all is said and done, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the worthy and precious name of Jesus, let the church say amen and amen. 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 Happy Sabbath and Happy New Year. Are you glad to be in God's house today? Amen. We want you to join us in singing Bless the Lord with me. It's a very simple song. And we want you to bless the Lord, praise him, and thank him for his goodness. Amen. And it goes like this. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Let's do it in harmony. Bless the Lord with me. 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 me. Clap your hands with me. Sabbath, everyone, and welcome to our first Sabbath in 2023 by God's grace and mercy. The announcements for Ephesus and Fairhaven for January 7th, 2023. Our tithe and offerings drop off will be at the Ephesus Church today between the hours of 3 and 5 p.m. Please go to www.esdac.org or www.fairhavensda.org and click on the tab at school and click on the tithe tab to see other ways in which to give. <clears throat> Join us every Sabbath, Saturday morning from 9.15 a.m. to 10.45 a.m to study God's word through the daily Sabbath school lesson. Go to the Ephesus or Fairhaven website 
and click on the Sabbath School link. We will begin a new quarterly lesson study guide this month entitled Managing for the Master Till He Comes. This coming week's study, lesson two, is entitled God's Covenants with Us. Hope to see you there. Ephesus and Fair Haven Church requires everyone to wear a mask in order to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and the flu virus during our services to help our members and our guests. Thank you for your cooperation in this regards. Brother Antoine and Sister Jeanette Brown's next Zoom devotional study on the book entitled Stay Married, a Couple's Devotional will be held Tuesday, January 17th at 7 p.m. Chapters 49 through 52 will be discussed. This will be the last chapter and final study for this series. Remember that you do not have to be married to be a part of this group. Join the Ephesus and Fairhaven Church every Wednesday night virtually on Zoom for prayer meeting at 7 p.m. Just log onto our church websites Click on the streaming service link and then the prayer meeting flyer to join us. We are studying the book, Baptism of the Holy Spirit. This week, we will be studying day 10, prayer and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Andre Eggleston will be speaking at Fairhaven Church today and will be formally introduced later during the service. Afterwards, there will be a brief meeting with both church congregations and Pastor Eggleston for dialogue and questions. Welcome, Pastor Eggleston. Now let us continue to keep our sick, shut in, bereaved, and religious and political leaders in constant prayer. Have a blessed Sabbath, everyone. of us know this song.
yellow black and white they are precious in his sight jesus loves the little children of the world jesus loves the little children all the children of the world red brown yellow black and white Sabbath. I was looking around trying to see if I could see any little faces and I don't see any so I guess I'll work with you all. <laughs> That's right. Lloyd said we're all kids at heart. All right so Sarah. Sarah wanted a phone. I'm sure some of you are familiar with children that want a phone. She really, really wanted a phone, and she begged, and she begged, and she begged, please, all my friends have phones, mama. Everybody but me has a phone. Her mother said, well, maybe for your birthday. It's January. My birthday's not till June. That's six months. We'll be out of school. I know I'll need a phone before then. Her mother said, well, we just don't have the money right now. And it'll go really fast. But mama, please, please, can I have a phone? So her mother thought about it. And you know, she thought, this is a good time for a lesson. She said, OK. She said, really? She said, mm-hmm, okay. We're gonna get you a phone. So they were out grocery shopping and mother said, okay, but you're gonna have to help me put the milk back, put the cheese back, put the eggs back, put the flour back, put the cereal back. She said, what, mama? She said, oh, we'll be all right and you'll have a phone. So when they got up, to the cash register in that basket was beans and rice and a little bit of cornmeal and a phone and she looked she said mama you sure this is enough food she said oh it's sure it's plenty and guess what you have a phone well that night of course they had Beans and rice. And dad said, mm, mm, mm. beans and rice, this show is nice. And they had some hot water cornbread with it. Oh, dad was as happy as he could be. Well, of course, Sarah wasn't one of her favorite meals, but she ate it. But she was so excited about her phone. She couldn't wait. Well, the next morning, she got up late and she said, oh, I got a phone. I can tell all the kids I have a phone. And she ran down for breakfast and they were having oatmeal. Oh my goodness, it was oatmeal. She didn't like oatmeal. She said, mama, she said, I'll just have some cereal today. She said, well, good luck with that, Sarah. There's no milk, but I guess water will work. If you want to put that in the cereal, she said, well, mama, no, I don't. She said, well, there's plenty of oatmeal in the pot. So she got the oatmeal. She said, well, you know, I like it with milk and brown sugar, mama. She said, well, you don't have to worry. We don't have any of that. She said, but we do have a little bit of honey. Put some honey in there and I'm sure it'll taste just as good. Well, it didn't. 
it was terrible. She thought, oh, mama, this is, she said, well, me and dad thought it was okay. And guess what? You have a phone. She was beginning to have thoughts about this phone. So at lunchtime, she opened her lunch and she looked and she asked the teacher if she could be excused because she had an emergency. And she went and she called the house, mama, mama. And her mother said, what's wrong? You're calling me, it must be an emergency. She said, mama, you mixed up me and daddy's lunch. She said, it's beans and rice in my lunch. She said, I don't have beans and rice in my lunch. She said, well, that's what we had. That's your lunch. Enjoy it. She said, I even put a piece of hot water cornbread in there just for you. Oh, my lunch. She said, the kids are going to laugh at me. Beans and rice in my lunch. She didn't eat her lunch. She just said, oh, I'm not feeling good today. I'm not going to eat my lunch. And she and her friends went off to play. She got home and she said, Mama, please, I can't have beans and cornbread and rice for my lunch. She said, where's the cheese or the, the, the meat or something, the chips? Her mother said, oh, we had to put all that back. We couldn't afford that. We had to get the phone. Remember, we had the phone. She said, Mama, I don't know if I want this phone. She said, this phone is, is, is causing problems. She said, oh, you'll be just fine. And that night, they had bean soup and rice. Oh, she said, oh, this is terrible. She said, Mama, we're going to have to have beans for the rest of the week, she said, probably, probably. She said, but you know, I can make chili with the beans. There won't be any meat in it, but there'll be chili beans. She said, and you know, I'll, I'll make burritos and we'll put the beans and rice and wrap them in the burritos. She said, there's all kinds of things I can do with this beans and rice. Well, Sarah decided, mama, you know what? I don't think I really need this phone right now. She said, you know, I probably couldn't wait till June to get a phone. She said, is it okay if we take the phone back? Her mother said, are you sure? Because you really, really, really said you needed a phone. She said, mama, I think we can take the phone back. Does that mean we'll have some milk and some eggs and cheese in the house? Her mother said, we probably will. She said, and my favorite cereal, she said, we might be able to work that in. And I won't have to have beans and rice for lunch. She said, probably not. She said, all right, I don't need the phone right now, mama. She said, I can wait till June. And her mother said, I'm so glad. She said, because sometimes what we want may not be what we need. She said, but you know what? I'm going to tell you something, little girl. God gives us everything we need. She said, he may not always give us what we want, but he's going to always make sure we have what we need. Happy Sabbath. We'll see you next time. Amen. Amen. At this time, will our officers come forward as we prepare to lift our tithe and offering? Let us pray. Father God, again, we thank you for the opportunity, first of all, of seeing 2023. Now we ask that you help us to be faithful to you in all things tithe, offering, talents, and gifts. 
Now bless those that are able to give, and, and may we be faithful in that, step out in faith, and those that are unable, when they are, bless them to be faithful as well. Now bless this offering, that it may spread your word and prepare us for your soon coming. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Sabbath school lesson is dealing with managing for the master till he comes. Now, if you didn't know, the Sabbath school quarterlies are done years in advance, you know, when they're prepared. And it's so timely that this quarter's lesson is dealing about managing till the master comes. I was listening to Sabbath school this morning and someone commented that we have a tendency to think that we own everything. This is my house my car, my phone. But in actuality, we don't own anything. And we have to remember that God has allowed us to be blessed, not only with material things, but with health, with mind, and all of those things. And as just as quickly as we have it, it can be taken away. If you don't believe me, ask those people that have dealt with tornadoes and earthquakes and, and flooding and, and disease and things. The pandemic, if it taught me nothing else, nothing is guaranteed. But as the folks say, but life, death, and taxes, that's the only thing you can depend on. But we must realize that God has asked us to be faithful stewards of everything that we have. And being faithful means that we must always put him first. And you know what? God is such a loving God that he gives us sometimes some of the things we want. But he asks that we be faithful. And it is my prayer that as we go into 2023, you know, we make a lot of New Year's resolutions. But we should make one promise to the Lord, and that is to trust him. If we promise to trust him, regardless of what we go through, if we trust him, he will get us through it. So I encourage you to be faithful to the Lord, not only in tithe and offering, but be faithful in the gifts that he has given you. Pray for someone. Smile to someone. Let someone know that you care about them and you love them. You know, the God asks us in Malachi, he says, will a man rob God? And he's not only talking about money and stuff, but he's talking about what he has blessed us and given us to do for others to further his kingdom. Yet, he repeats, yet you have robbed me in tithe and in offering. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. We give thee but thine own. We give thee but thine own. Whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O oh Lord, from thee. Amen. You may be seated. It's now time for prayer. And I've said it time and time again, you know, if you ever needed the Lord before, we sure do need him now. The story is told of a pilot that was flying from the Rocky Mountains to Georgia and in flight with his wife, he died at the wheel, still up in the air. The wife frantically went on the radio and was saying, help me, help me, my, my pilot, my husband is unconscious at the wheel. I need help in landing this plane. And she kept switching from channel to channel saying, help me, because she didn't hear any response. She never got response, but finally she landed the plane roughly and had to crawl several miles to get help. Now the point I want to make is that if she would have stayed on the one radio frequency until they responded, she would have gotten the help, but she kept switching it when she didn't hear anything. Many times we, when we need help from the Lord, we keep switching channels, switching the frequency. And we'll go from praying to the Lord, to asking a friend to help us, 
to put in our faith in ourselves but we must learn that we need to stay on the same frequency with the Lord and sometimes when we don't hear him he's just saying wait have faith trust me so as we go into 2023 is my prayer that we learn to stay on that frequency with the Lord sometime the Lord is just waiting to see whether or not we trust him and regardless of what you're going through those that are here with us in the sanctuary those that are online regardless of what you're going through please realize that God knows what you need God will answer your prayer but God is working to save you he is working to save me so as we prepare our hearts I, I want you to continue to lift up our sick and shut in lift up our world leaders just this past Monday we saw a miracle happen with a football player 24 years old that heart stopped beating right on the field and yet as I look at the news report they say he's speaking now he's talking he's clear and I want to tell you God works in mysterious ways because as I listen to secular news and, and radio things you know what they talked about prayer prayer to God it was a witness they didn't talk about doctors being skilled or anything but they said it was the prayers to a heavenly father that brought this young man through saints we need to be shouting from the housetop that prayer does work that we serve a God that hears prayers and regardless of what the doctors and men may say we serve a great God. We serve an almighty God. We serve a God that will never leave or fail us. So as we go into 2023, may we continue to trust in him and him alone. I invite you, if you can, to kneel as we petition the Lord in prayer. Whatever is on your heart, whatever you're going through right now, give it to the Lord trust in him realize that yes this is going to be a struggle because satan is angry he knows he has but a short time but i ask you to trust in him father god we thank you for allowing us to see 2023 there were many last year did not make it through this year but we thank you, Father, and we know that you have a work for us to do. Now, first of all, we ask forgiveness of our sins. Father, anything that we may have said or done uh, in home, at work, uh, with our spouse, with our family and children, Lord, forgive us and give us a right spirit to ask forgiveness and to be more like thee. Father God, we ask for healing of our spirit. Help us to get rid of that anger and that malicious spirit and that jealousy. Help us to not get caught up into the worldly entanglement of materialism. Help us to realize, Father, that everything that you've given us belongs to you. Father, we ask you to be with the sick, those that are going through mental anguish, those that are going through medical and physical illnesses. Father, bring peace to them. We pray for healing, Father, but if not healing, we pray for salvation for their souls, that they may be saved. Now, Father, bless us, your people, that we move forward in your will, Father, and that we do your will. We thank you for blessing Damar, Father, a living miracle. And we pray that this will be a witness to others of the power of prayer. And we pray that he will walk ever closer to you. Now bless us as we bring all our burdens, all our cares, all our fears. Take away the spirit of being fearful. And we ask you now, Father, to bless your manservant, Pastor Eggleston, as he comes to impart to us your word. Father, clear his mind, connect him directly with you. Let there be no distractions. Move him out of the way that we may see you. And may hearts be one, not only in the sanctuary, but those that are online, looking at us at home, Father, touch them and give them peace. And when all is said and done, Father, we will truly, truly give you all the praise, honor, and glory. 
In the worthy and mighty name of Jesus, we claim this and everything else in 2023. Save us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. And Amen. Happy Sabbath, church, and Happy New Year to everyone. For those who may not know me, my name is Gary Loster from the Ephesus Church, and I'm happy to be with you this morning. Let me share a few things with you in terms of the conference. I currently serve on the Lake Region Conference Committee as the Executive Chair of Personnel, and also on Lake Union Committee as the chair of the audit. I represent Flint and Saginaw District. Now what I do try to do is to make sure that you are represented, that you have a voice. And since I've been there, I've communicated with your first elder and I think maybe a couple more elders on what's happening in Lake Region Conference as I know it. Now I'm not just sitting there to be sitting. If I know that there's a concern or something that we need, I certainly will address that on your behalf. So by God's grace, I'm there for four years, and then after that, my term is done. Prayerfully that you will look at appointing someone from the Flint Church, as I've been there for a number of years. But again, I try to be transparent, and I try to communicate. Primarily, I communicate with Elder Dexter Clark to make sure that Flint is aware of things that are going on at the conference level to keep you informed. When I know, okay, let me put the caveat there, when I know. So our job is to look at placement of pastors and other issues dealing in the personnel realm. So I want to make sure that you knew that and if you have a concern, you certainly can reach out to me and I'll certainly follow up with that and get back to you as timely as I can. Sister Harris mentioned that after the service, we will have a greet and meet with Elder Eggleston. I would ask when we do that that we all come as close as we can to the front and you'll be able to ask him questions. And I want to sort of do it openly, there's no question about that, and then give him time to eat and I know that he's expressed a concern about returning to Indianapolis, so if we could have your cooperation in that regard, I would appreciate it, and I know that he would as well. I have the responsibility, the awesome responsibility, of introducing the speaker of the hour, that is in the person of Elder Andre Eggleston. Elder Eggleston is a dedicated evangelist with 20 years of experience preaching the gospel throughout the United States. His experience in law enforcement has provided many additional skills that have enabled him to relocate, to relate to different and diverse populations. He has attended Oakwood and Andrews University and is a graduate of Ball State University, Muncie, Indiana. He's concurrently pursuing his master's degree in theological studies at Anderson University grad school program and has four courses before he completes his master's degree. Elder Eggleston is an author and has written a book, What Is This Thing Called Prayer in Finding Intimacy with God? His goals are to serve God's people, build relationships in the community, grow the church that shares with the love of God to the world, and provide constantly in support to the young people. In his own words, a divine call has been placed upon my life by Jesus Christ, and it drives me to serve my people and leave the church according to the word of Christ. After the special music and the scriptures, the next voice you will hear will be that of Elder Andre Eggleston. Hear him. Moving in 
I'm the one train that's on this track. It runs to heaven and then right back. Every time I lose my spirit, moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the spirit, moving in my heart, I will pray. Oh, out of his church say amen. amen I don't know about you but I feel the presence of the Lord in this place I heard Job say I heard about you with my ears but now my eyes can see you and if you went through something in 2022 and you know how God brought you through then you probably can feel what Job felt I heard about you, but now my eyes can see you. God shows up in the dark places, and God delivers us, those who are faithful to his word. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thousands shall fall at my side, but yet 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. I don't know about you, but I know the Lord in a personal way because he walks with me and talks with me and shows me his way, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I don't know about you, but I feel all right today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's a mighty good God. I'm not worried about 2023 because I came through 2022. And if he brought me through 2022, he'll lead me through 2023. And if for some reason I don't make it, my heart is fixed. And my mind is made up. And if I have to go by myself, I'm going to go and see what the end is going to be. Can I go down to the country? I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. Well, The right from the wrong. I want to be at the meeting around God's throne. I'm gonna say it again. Yeah. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. When all the saints get home After separating The right from the wrong I want to be at the meeting Around God's throne I think he said it like this mm -hmm. When I get to heaven I'm gonna 
See my mother, mm, she's gonna say, here come my child, he must have got here by prayer. After separating the right from the wrong, mm -hmm, I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting. Do you want to be there? I want to be at the meeting. Have I got a witness? I want to be at the meeting. I want to be at the meeting around God's throne. Yeah, 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 yeah. giving honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. Elder Clark, Elder Loster, thank you for those kind words. And all of the officers of this church. I'm grateful this morning God has allowed me to be in this position. I'm actively still working as a police officer as we go through this process. And I know God's work and will will be done and I will follow accordingly. And I want to thank the Lord for all of you who make up the body of Christ. I can see God has been good to you. Have you been good to him? He's been good to you. Have you been good to him? You know, we serve a really good God, faithful, on time God, and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. If you'll turn with me to the book of Philippians, I don't need much of your time. Philippians chapter 3, there is a word from the Lord as we encourage you and challenge you for 2023. Chapter 3, beginning at verse 12. And if you have it, say amen. And there you will find these words recorded. Now as though I had already attained. Not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to use for a subject title a better me in 2023. A better me in 2023. Let us pray. Eternal Father and merciful God. We pray now that your words will come to life. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak through these lips of clay. 
and give us what we need deep down in our souls. Father, we pray that you will draw us closer and keep us by your side. Is our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Paul is writing to the church at Philippi from jail. He is writing to the church at Philippi about growing. Because if you're not growing and going, you are lying and dying. You cannot live in the presence of God and not grow. Church folk can come to church and not grow. But a child of God cannot live in his presence in the church in the community, in the home, and not grow. What I love about this letter to the Philippian church is that Paul is addressing practical godliness in one of his darkest hours. Even though Paul was in prison, he was still preaching. Even though Paul was in prison, he was still counseling. Even though Paul was in prison, he was still loving and caring and pastoring the churches. Practical godliness at work. I can see why Paul could say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation is not stagnant. It does not stand still. It is not a one-time fix and get right. The day you accept Christ and accept it into the family of God and baptize, your growth does not stop there. Just because you was justified in the moment, now is required sanctification by faith. Your practical godliness by the word of God must demonstrate your relationship with him that's evident in the world. People need to see God in you in order to know that you are in him. Paul was concerned about these Saints of God at Philippi who were being challenged by these Judaizers, church folk, who had accepted Christ, but they had not accepted the word of God, righteousness by faith. They were still connected to the law. They believed in Christ, but they was committed to the law. They believed in Christ, but they were committed to works of righteousness. They were committed to Christ, but they denied the power thereof. And Paul was concerned about these Christians who were being challenged by this. They were being challenged by these Judaizers and losing faith in Christ, thinking that they had to prove themselves by keeping the law. But Paul was trying to get them to see that it's by the life that you live in your relationship with Christ that grows you. It is the study of the word and by faith that grows you. Your prayer life, your connection and communion with God is what grows you. That's what supersedes the law is your relationship. Paul talks about uh, his obligation to Christ, his indebtedness. Christ, he understood that it was his relationship with Christ that 
put Paul into a position where he was, whether he was suffering or succeeding. And if you read on in the book of Philippians in chapter 4, you will hear Paul say, it doesn't matter if I'm hungry or if I'm full, if I'm up, if I'm down, if I'm rich, if I'm poor, I am content in all things. And that's one of the ways you will know if you have a relationship with Christ, if it's authentic, if it's real, if you are content with where you are. That's a sign that you're growing is contentment. Be satisfied with what God has blessed you with and not comparing yourself to other people. That's a sign of growth and maturity. I remember when I was a young man and playing basketball and enjoying some things of life and thought I had, had it going on and, and I'd say some things talking to my peers and some of the young ladies and, and I'd say some things that was immature and even ignorant and stupid. And the first thing they would say, boy, you need to grow up. Oh, they told you that before. Because of your immaturity, you need to grow up. Milk is for babies. But the meat of the world is for men and women who walk with Christ. And I know folk have been in the church 30 and 40 years and still drinking milk. You need to grow up in the word. That's why you become so sensitive. That's why things bother you so much. That's why you can't get along with folk. Worrying about what people are saying about you. Worrying if you're going to be recognized for what you do. Because you need to grow up in Christ. That's what Paul is saying here as he talks about even though I'm in a good, strong, vibrant relationship with Christ. I still have not attained. I'm still not perfect. I'm still striving with Christ. Some of us have sat down on the Lord. We feel like we've made it. We feel like there's nothing else we need to do. We feel like there's no other place we need to go. And so we sit down on God until we need him. As long as the light is on and things are going well, we sit down on God and enjoy the blessings that he has given us. And when the ceiling falls in, then we want to get up. Then we want to try to act like we know him and act like we're praising him and act like we're worshiping him because now we want the Lord to come through for us. But when you're in a relationship with the Lord, these things don't bother you because you're always striving to become better than what you were in 2022. You're determined to be better in 2023. And so you commit yourself and recommit yourself and rededicate yourself every single day of your life to be better for God. Yeah, no, we know you're not trying to work your way into heaven. We know that's been settled, that's been fixed in eternity. But you know that you want to be the best that you can be for the Lord. I talked to some older folk. They've been in the church for years. And the first thing they want to say is, I'm too old. That's for the young folk. I didn't done my job. It ain't nothing else for me to do. Let y'all, let them do all that work. But I got a word for you. As long as there's breath in your body, I don't care if you can't walk. I don't care if you can't get up out the bed. I don't care if arthritis is wearing you out like it's wearing me out. You still can do something for the Lord. You still can talk on the telephone with everybody in the neighborhood. You still can turn the TV on. You still can do the things that you want to do. Now it's time to do something for the Lord. It's time to grow up. If you want to go to heaven, 
It's time to grow up. And you've heard it said, heaven is free, but it ain't cheap. Everybody can't get in hell. And I mean, in the heaven, and I tell people all the time, that's why God made a hell, because some folk are determined to go to hell. Everybody don't want to go to heaven. They talk about heaven, but everybody don't want to go to heaven. That's why they live the way they live. That's why they do the way they, the things that they do, because they don't want to go. Now, they can, they'll, they'll go if they can go any way they want. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? They'll go if they can go any way they want to go. But God don't accept you any kind of way. You got to go his way. You got to be the way he created you to be. Holy and sanctified. Saved by the blood. Hidden in Christ. Walking by faith. Standing on the word of God. Trusting in him. It's the only way you're going to get into heaven is by walking with the Lord. And if you look at verse 14, we get into the first thing that Paul talks about. If you want to be better in 2023 than you were in 2022, the first thing you've got to do is press toward the mark. What mark? I know you're sitting there like me. What mark is Paul talking about? What is the mark? It's two things. Number one, personal mark. The personal mark is your goals for God. You didn't hear what I said. For God, not for yourself. Because now in Christ, you've got to understand one thing. And that is your agenda does not matter anymore. Your goals does not matter anymore. Your personal, uh, your personal wants does not matter anymore. If they don't line up with the word of God, they don't matter. I know that's a hard thing for us to accept, beloved. But when God called you, like Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, when Christ calls a man, he bids him to die. Your dreams must die. Your goals must die. Your agenda must die. Because God is going to create a new plan for you. Just for you. Just for you. But you got to open yourself up. And know what God's mark is for you. And it's only for you. So don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to even family and friends. Because everybody don't know what God's mark is for you in 2023. But the only way you're going to know is to get down on your knees and spend some time in prayer and fasting and crying out to God. So he can show you what he created you to be. He said, I know the thoughts I have for you. And young people, if you're in, if you're in this church today, I, I challenge you to get on board early. I wish I had knew when I was in my teens, when I was 10 years old, 15 years old. I wish I had knew that God had plans for me. Lord, it would have saved me a lot of headaches. It would have saved me a lot of mistakes. It would have saved me from a lot of failures if I had known that he had plans for me. And mother of the church, he still has plans for you. And the second mark is this, is his universal plan. It is spiritual perfection. And that's why Paul says, I have not attained perfection yet. We're not talking about absolute perfection. We're talking about grow up maturity. We're talking about laying aside every sin and weight that so easily besets us. Now, there are some things inside of us that we don't even know that they're there. But there are some things that we know we have no business doing. Well, as long as don't nobody see it. Well, as long as don't nobody know. 
Well, as long as I do it in my house, I'm all right. But can I tell you something? We see it. We see it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And out of the abundance of the heart, the body acts. We see it in your behavior. We see it in your look. We see it in your treatment of people. We see it in the things that you do. You're not hiding. You're not getting away with anything. Spiritual perfection is striving in the spirit of Christ to be just like him. And that is predicated on unconditional love. And I'll give you one thing about spiritual perfection, and that is the ability to forgive. And in 2023, and I'm not going to stay on this long, you ought to go in 2023 making every wrong right. There's some people in your house that you need to make wrongs right. There are some people in this church that you need to make some wrongs right. Some people on your job make the wrongs right going into 2023 because if you don't you cannot and will not become a better me in 2023 spiritual perfection matthew chapter 5 45 through 40 48 jesus deals with that spiritual perfection he deals with what it looks like he deals with how it works he deals with what you're supposed to do with it spiritual perfection and that's what paul said i'm striving and if you know the story of Paul, you will know at the end of his life, Paul was still making wrongs right. Paul was still getting things together. Paul was still striving to be a better person when he told Luke, bring me the parchment, bring me my cloak, and bring Mark to me. He got it together. Paul wanted to make sure that the slate was clean. He wanted to make sure that the last step, the last thing he needed to do to be a better person for God was done. He made it right with John Mark. And if you know the story, you know what I'm talking about. Spiritual perfection. And then Paul goes on and he talks about we need to chase the prize. What is the prize? You're like me, Lord, what is the prize? It sounds good, but I need to know what is the prize. Some folks say it's the crown of righteousness. I need a little bit more than that. I know what you're talking about. When we get to heaven, we're going to put on the big crowns with many rocks in it. We're going to enjoy walking around in a long white robe and a big old crown over my head. But I need a little bit more than that. If you're like me, I need a little bit more than that. I've been wearing clothes. I've been wearing hats. I, I, I kind of know how that feels. I need a little bit more than that. What is the prize, Lord? He said the prize is eternal fellowship with Christ. That's what Paul was chasing. Eternal fellowship with Christ. Now let me show you how it works. Uh, in the eschaton, it's the then and it's the now. You don't have to wait until Jesus comes. You can experience eternal fellowship with Christ today. That's the prize. And enjoying that fellowship and communion in the presence of God creates that growing, that nurturing, and that nourishing of Christ. In your life. Let God settle the dispute in your eternal, internal self, in the interman. Let God settle that conflict that's going on in your life that's preventing you from enjoying eternal fellowship with Christ. And what that's gonna do for you is gonna help you enjoy fellowship 
with your brothers and sisters? Have you been around folk that you didn't want to be around? Because when the sun is shining, they bring the dark clouds. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. When it's dry outside, they bring the rain. Huh? When it's warm outside, they make it cold. With all of that negativity, with all of that darkness in their life, that's no fellowship with Christ. And they'll tell you before you tell them, yeah, I know the Lord. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. And then the next thing you know, boy, the ceiling falls in. And before you know it, you need help getting out the house. <laughs> Y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because they've drained you. If you are not in fellowship with Christ, you will go around trying to get some energy from other people, not knowing that you are draining them with that negative, satanic spirit on your life. Some folk in here need to get delivered. <laughs> I didn't come to meddle. Get delivered so you can enjoy 2023. Eternal fellowship with Christ through worship, adoration and appreciation, through fellowship, having the freedom to know him and be with him. Maybe when you go home and go to sleep tonight, you won't need the TV on. Y'all didn't think I knew that. Y'all probably think I'm a prophet. <laughs> How you know I sleep with the TV on? <laughs> well, I was talking to one sister one night, and I happened to call, and, and she was sleeping. I said, uh, what's all that noise in the background? <clears throat> you asleep. She said, that's the TV. I said, but it ain't saying nothing. Oh, that's the static. I just got to have something on. Fairhaven in Ephesus. I'm trying to tell you, boy, you're in bad shape when you can't sleep without static being on the TV. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I want you to go through 2023 as I tell people, walk in your authority. Walk in the power of the gospel. Walk in your freedom, and that's only in Christ. And you got to see him every single day. You'll hear me say this often. I have breakfast with God. What? You have breakfast with God? I do. Every single day. Yesterday I was in a hurry. I was trying to run out of the house. I had some business to take care of, and some said, you need to sit down. And eat because you can't break fast until you have breakfast. And I don't want to eat the physical food before I eat the spiritual food. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> See, that's why I can't nobody tell me about him. I know him for myself. I don't need nobody to go with me. I got him with me. I don't need nobody to help me get up off the floor. He's going to pick me up. You can knock me down, but I'm going to get back up. You can talk about me, and I'll talk about you down on my knee because I know him for myself. He fixed me a plate, and I eat, and I say, Lord, I'm going to need a second helping. This thing is so good. I understand what the psalmist said. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusteth in him. Oh, I know the Lord, and I'm glad that I know him. And I'm going to close with this third point. He said, of the high calling of God. 
in Christ Jesus. The high calling of God is to live holy in Christ. Have I got a witness? To present your body a living sacrifice unto him. Paul said in Corinthians, come out from among them in 2023. You don't need to be around people that's not leading you upward. They're leading you downward. You're going to have to cut some people off in 2023. You're going to have to stop talking to some folk in 2023. You're going to have to turn some people off and they're going to hate you. They're going to talk behind your back. They're going to say you think you're too good. They're going to say you think you're better than everybody. They're going to say you just because you didn't got in church, you think you better than me because I'm still in the world. They're going to try to hurt you and gossip on you. They're going to do any and everything to bring you down. But I stop by to tell you that if you know him and he's with you, Everything is going to be all right. Uh, you just keep walking uh, and preaching uh, and teaching uh, and testifying and worshiping and reading and coming to church and serving and loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and body. And everything is going to be all right. You holy. You've been called. You've been called out from among them. You've been called to be separate. You're a chosen generation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Call forth to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Walk like it. Act like it. You're a child of God. And in 2023, I know... By faith, you're going to do the impossible. Did you hear what I said? The impossible. Why you say that, preacher? Because you're going to move from the natural into the supernatural. When you're in the spirit of Christ, uh, I heard Jesus say that the Holy Spirit, uh, he comes uh, to lead and guide you into all truth. But he don't just do that. He don't just lead and guide you into all truth. Don't miss the last part. He will show you things to come. The Bible says that God shows us signs and wonders. God is already showing signs to you today as to what's going to happen tomorrow. You got to open up your spiritual eyes uh, and be patient uh, and listen uh, and look uh, and pay attention because the Lord by the Spirit of God is leading you from glory to glory, from success to success. From victory to victory. He's leading you. And you've got to accept what the Lord is giving you. And I'm going to close. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. And the doors of the church are open. But I want you to understand something. That when you leave here today, you need to spend some time with the Lord. As you look at 2023. As you look at your life and how you fit into his plan. Don't try to fit God into your plan. He's too big. He won't fit. You don't have enough room. You ain't smart enough. You ain't wise enough. You, you don't know enough to fit him into your plan. You got to fit into his plan. So you need to go home and talk to the Lord. What will you have me to do for 2023? And that's when everything will come together. There might be one here today who don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. And you have this opportunity now to come and give the Lord your life. Not just for 2023, but for eternity. 
because God wants to save you more than you want to be saved. Think about that. He wants to save you more than you want to be saved. Maybe you're tired of being a church folk. Maybe you're just tired of playing church. You don't want to play church in 2023. You want to have an authentic relationship with Christ. Why don't you come? And my final appeal is this. I know you got it together. I know you in Christ. I know you're saved. But would you come down so I can pray a special prayer for 2023 for you. You got to allow God's spirit to grip you today and guide you. You have to believe that this year is going to be better than last year. And you may have had a great year last year, but it can be better this year. A better me in 2023. Open up your hearts and your minds so the Spirit of God can grip you. It was good for It was good for him. <clears throat> oh, yes, it was. <clears throat> good enough for me. Give it to me, Lord. Yeah. Come on. Do you want it? John, it's good enough. Oh, yeah. I need it. What about Give you? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Loving Father and eternal God, Master of everything. We, your children, come, O oh God, as humble as we know how. We come, Master, to the footstool of mercy. We come, Lord, surrendering our plans, our goals, our agendas. We, we come, oh Lord, surrendering our very lives to you right now. We want to be better in 2023, but Lord, we can't be better without you, the center of our lives. We need you to be a lamp unto our feet. We need you to be a light unto our path. We need you to hold our hands. We need you to lead and guide us every step of the way. We need you every moment of the day. Every day, 365 days this year, we need you, O oh Lord. I pray right now over every heart that has assembled around the throne. Father, I pray that you would give them power, and deliverance, healing, Lord, victory, God. I pray for their communion and fellowship in the Spirit of Christ. I pray, Lord, that we'll lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets us. I pray for our faithfulness, to your word Jesus said come unto me and we've come Lord we come by faith knowing that if we trust in you we cannot and will not fail and so father we know you have something for us to do in 2023 
And we pray right now that you would give us the power and strength to do it. We pray for revelation. We pray for understanding. That we will know without a doubt that this is what thus saith the Lord. This is the way. Now walk ye in it. And Lord, we'll be faithful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In the mighty, majestic, powerful name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. For it's his sake we do pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We have special prayer for Sister West. Would you please take your seats just for a moment? Would you please take your seat just for a moment? She wants special prayer. Thank you so much. And I'm going to ask that you pray with me for her. She don't want to play church, she said. That's courage. That's confidence in Christ. To take a stand and acknowledge your need for him. Angels are rejoicing because of her love for Christ. I'm excited for her. And I know that 2023 is going to be better for her than it was last year. And she may have had a good year last year. You may have had a good year. But it's going to be better in 2023. Eternal God and merciful Father. Lord, I come with my dear sister. We come together. Lord, I don't want to play church. And she don't want to play church. She knows, Lord, that this is it's too serious. It is a matter of life and death. It's a matter of eternity, Lord. For some people, it just has not settled in their heart. And they don't see the magnitude. They don't feel the urgency of knowing you in a personal way. But my dear sister, she felt that need today. And Lord, she's giving you her heart, mind, soul, and body right now. She's asking that you would take charge. She don't need to know where you're gonna lead her. She don't wanna know what's next. She don't wanna know what the blessing will be. She just wants you. She just wants to be with you. If you're there, she'll be there. If you're not there, she don't want to go. Wherever you lead, would you give her a special blessing, special anointing, a double portion of your power? Lift her right now. That she might sit in heavenly places with Jesus. That's what Paul said. We have that privilege to sit high in heavenly places. We don't have to wait till the battle is over to shout. We don't have to wait until we die and pass over 
to sit in heavenly places, to be a citizen of your kingdom. You have that privilege right now. And she's accepted that. So God, take her hand right now. You know we can only lead her so far. And she can only lead herself so far. And we trust you right now that you're going to lead her every step of the way. And you will never leave her nor forsake her. You will be there for her every moment of the day. You will love her in spite of herself unconditionally because you are God in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Hallelujah. Get it. We can come down to the front, please, as much as possible. We all come together. It's not really like a big thing. We can get a little closer than that. Before, we'd like to just have prayer to end benediction for our online family that's online right now streaming before we disconnect. So let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, again, we thank you for the opportunity for your manservant to be here with us today. We thank you for the message of being a better me in 2023. Now we ask you to bless us as we move forward and as we go into the remaining portion of the Sabbath and into next week, Father, be with us, dwell with us, keep us, and protect us. Thank you in the worthy and precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.